Welcome to All Caps. Woo! Yeah. Let's go! The Dame Lillard saga continues. The Blazers are terrible. They're the worst defensive team in the league. They just fired Neil Olshi for reasons which will come to light at some point that will hopefully, I think they think, involve not paying him his full salary. Uh, no one knows uh, where Dame Lillard, who is currently uh, suffering from an abdominal strain, which, you know, way to brag that you have abs, Dame. Congratulations. Meanwhile, Olshi has been fired, and Woj came out with an article. The most complicating factor in Portland's GM search, Damian Lillard's desire to be extended and become NBA's highest player in his mid-30s. Now, some have read this as Neil Olshi on his way out the door, firing some final shots in the direction of Dame Lillard, aided and abetted by Adrian Wojnarowski, who part of what he's great at is managing these relationships with people who are angry angry about stuff. So here is Wells underscore P tweeted Woj and Olshi after writing that article slandering Dame. The article basically is like Dame wants to make $50 million a year in his mid thirties. And hey, isn't that going to be tough? And Neil Olshi had to deal with this. And that was so hard. You can't understand how hard it was. Also, Neil Olshi uh, left the Blazers. Why? Don't ask. I'm not going to mention it. I don't know. He just left. It's for reasons. And so Wells P tweeted a picture of former president Donald Trump and Mike Pence who uh, Donald Trump once said we should hang him and here they are shaking hands you know here's the thing Olshi is no longer gonna be a good source because he's not doesn't have a job anymore but he probably has a significant amount of Woj coins still in the Woj system and once you're no longer a GM you can't spend your Woj coin it's like when you're at Disneyland you can't spend Disney bucks outside of Disneyland and so this was just like him spending all his Woj coin meanwhile Dame Willard has uh, expressed interest which I always love this framing Dame Willard Lillard has apparently expressed interest in playing with several defensively minded wing players like Ben Simmons, Jalen Brown, and Aaron Gordon per uh, Jake Fisher. Now the problem here is this. The Blazers want to trade CJ McCollum, especially now that Neil Olshi is out of town. And Daryl Morey is like, no, but we want Dame. You're in an impasse here, folks. You either get the PS5 or the PS3, but like, guess which one you want. Joining us now for another Anale ASMR segment is Flagrant Mag's Alex Haig. Alex, what is going on with your trailblazers? Damian Lillard is floundering in Portland, and I'm not sure what to do about it. Obviously, the Blazers desperately need some sort of defensive help. Would you want to see Ben Simmons at the Moda Center? You know, Jason. Yeah. You sort of opened up a can of worms. <laughs> I think Ben Simmons would benefit from Damian Lillard's famously inclusive leadership. <laughs> but I also feel very comforted in being last in defense. It's the one thing that makes me feel like I'm rooting for the same team I always have. Where would you say Dame Lillard stands in the pantheon of Blazers greats if you had to shuffle through all the great Blazers? I've been filing away my blazer faves, and I would say Damian Lillard is probably a Portland favorite, probably number one, if not number two, to Clyde, and possibly Brandon Roy, which has never made sense to me, but that's for another time. Brandon was very, very fragile. Yes, yes. This is the sound of his bone on bone. A lot of people have been, you know, Sean Strani among them have been typing this story. Hold on, sorry, I spelled it wrong. Clickbait. If you could go back in time and say erase one mistake of all she's or whoever's, what would it be? I wish he wouldn't have given Myers Leonard such a giant fucking contract for so many goddamn reasons. Myers Leonard, uh, one of the more famous anti-Semites of recent NBA history. <laughs> Could you shine some 
All Caps is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports for cash prizes. Through Underdog's slick mobile app and easy-to-use website, you can draft a season-long NBA team in minutes, and the best part is you do not have to worry about any in-season management. Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports. No waivers, trades, or lineup settings. You just set your lineup, and that's it. At Underdog, you get the best possible score from your team each and every week. Head to underdogfantasy.com today or download their app from the App Store or Google Play Store and you get a free deposit match up to $100 when you sign up and make your first deposit with the promo code ALLCAPS. A-L-L-C-A-P-S. So what are you waiting for? Sign up with the code ALLCAPS and draft your NBA Dream Team today. And now, your scroll! First up, uh, we got a fox in the hen house, folks. It's Deion Sanders teaching young athletes uh, the importance of, you know, just being careful about the people that contact you uh, via DM and social media. And to uh, teach that lesson, he brought uh, Brittany Renner, famous Instagram influencer, mother of child created with uh, Charlotte Hornets, player PJ Washington, and other things of that nature. Here is the clip. Already, I feel like this is not the energy that this particular lesson is seeking to evoke, right? This is like kind of like a serious, hey guys, like let's take responsibility for our actions. I don't think it's good when that lesson starts with like, Woo! <laughs> You know that. It was like bringing in a, a malfunctioning gun into a classroom to teach about gun safety. <laughs> hey guys, don't uh, spin the barrel and point it in your head. Don't do that. Don't like not know how many bullets are in it and then like point it at somebody and laugh. Don't do any of this that I'm going to show you how to do right now. Blue checks. I'm talking heavy Verified. hitters. Some of y'all's favorite rappers. Yes, I, I love Deion Sanders here explaining to the kids what being verified on social media means. <laughs> Here is what it is. We're just stupid. Guys are just dumb. It's crazy that this needs to be said. Like, hey, don't have lots of kids before you're ready because it could be expensive. And then that's without even getting into the whole raising a child for like a, a period of time. And you know, this could be a thing that happens if you just are trolling DMs for sexual conquests. Uh, NBA players, football players. It's like, <coughs> to me, once you reach that level just of popularity, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever Again, you want. Again, like, doesn't me, this, listen to this music. Journey on here, I felt like my doesn't life this, like I isn't in this Disney like world. fucking. Like I lived in Disney World. Like, I'm getting you, emotional. You get to skip I know. Line. You get privilege. Like, people just want to be next to you. They don't even see you as human anymore. <laughs> this is like legitimately the Interstellar soundtrack. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just play this really quick. No. No, not that one. But here we go. Uh, Pascal Siakam got peed on. But then, yeah, yesterday I picked her up and, and you know, yeah, and, and then she peed on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was that, I don't know, man. And, and my brother kind of laughed about it. He was like, hey, you gonna play what's more? So I was like, hey. Don't share this. Just be like, I had a great game. I don't know, I've been preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> like, I've been preparing, yeah, I've been training really hard, yeah. you know, I like, studied, studied a lot of game film. Yeah, yeah. I've been like in the film room, <laughs> listening to my coaches. Me. Let's see, father and son, Mike Trudell. Uh, asked about watching his son play in Saturday's showcase, LeBron said he still thinks about playing with him one day. LeBron, have you stopped thinking about playing with your son one day? Have you given up that dream yet? What's the status of that dream that you have and the bond between a father and son? Is it over or is it still going? He said Bronny's dream is to play in the NBA. Quote, he has my support and my blueprint. Who knows if I can... I mean, the, the genetics, the genetics. He has my support and my blueprint with health and a little bit of luck that would be the ultimate thing. I think this is wonderful. I will say this, LeBron needs to get his kids into the professional level because right now it is LeVar Ball 3, LeBron 0. That's a good point. <laughs> wow. So what to, tell me what the blueprint, the genetics, <laughs> what is it really, what do the genes really do if LeVar Ball is like, I got three in there. So ball is in your court. Let's talk about Luka Doncic. Listen, uh, people come in all shapes and sizes. And I think that is part of the beauty of life. That said, here is uh, Tim McMahon on the low post talking about Luka Doncic. Luka has to stop reporting at 260 plus and playing his way into shape. That cannot be an annual storyline. He got up to a slow start last year. Guys, Luka Doncic is 260 plus pounds when he comes into work. First of all, Luka is huge. 
I think the other shocking thing about this was then Zach then said, "What was the figure you just gave?" Uh, two hundred sixty plus. He has to stop doing that. What does Zion weigh then? I feel like Zion. Uh, well, I mean, the, I know he weighs more than that, but two sixty. Uh, the number I've heard from several places on Zion is uh, seventy pounds higher than two sixty. Let you do seventy math on pounds. That. Let me just say that that I've heard. I love that there is like a whisper network of people just being like, "Hey, I heard, I heard Zion is at three <laughs> thirty. So Chris Kirshner, Hawks reporter for uh, The Athletic, had a report here uh, about the Hawks. Through 25 games, the state of the Hawks offense on fire, defense in trouble. Still difficult to grasp how good this team could be as the season progresses. And then people start responding to you. It's almost like three of their best defenders have been out of the lineup a lot. Chris, let me guess you didn't read the story or have no reading comprehension. Which one is it? That's rough. Uh, BJ then said, no, I'm not paying to read this LMAO. Chris Kirshner, cool, say you're broke and continue about your day. Chris, you're not like fucking exposing Vladimir Putin. It is the Hawks, and yes, it's important that all the staff at The Athletic uh, get paid for their endeavors, but like, you know. He asserts that this guy's broke, but all he says is, I'm not paying to read this, which could just mean like, it's not worth paying right, for. Right, this is not like, <laughs> right, it's not like a lease on a BMW. Like, it's a story about how the Hawks are, how the Hawks are struggling. Here is Trey Young saying, <laughs> shaking my head, who says this? I ain't buying that article, what that make me, with a clown emoji, hashtag next question. And it's a good point. Listen, uh, the joy of capitalism in the marketplace is choice, isn't it, Chris? I can decide whether to subscribe to The Athletic and not read your article. That doesn't necessarily make me, uh, make me a broke bitch. I might be a broke bitch, and there's no shame in that. We should talk about uh, Ennis Cantor Freedom, who has called out various NBA players for, uh, for I guess, like supporting China. Here is Russell Westbrook clapping in Ennis Cantor Freedom's face. <laughs> uh, Ennis Cantor, I mean, what can we say? Listen, uh, human rights in China is an important, I think it's an important subject that we should not have Ennis Cantor guide us through. That's all. Oh, Canada. New news from the COVID front, the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Beginning January 15th, any NBA player, according to Shams Tarania, who is not fully vaccinated will be unable to enter Canada to play games in Toronto. Canadian government will require all individuals entering Canada to be fully vaccinated. <laughs> That's it. They've won the championship, their ninth title in 10 years for the Toronto Raptors. Global Climate Change Arena is going absolutely crazy. Co-owners Drake and Pete Davidson Swift Jr. are absolutely going crazy. The orphaned refugees outside are, are celebrating. The wildfires are only within 10 miles of the arena. Shouts to Prime Minister Drake for allowing the game to continue. What a celebration here for uh, all surviving humanity in North America as the Raptors win again. Up next after the celebration, uh, stay tuned for Saturday Night Live, Keenan Thompson in his 40th season.